Lauren Ritchie from Waffle TV, sponsored by Bloomers, and today I'm joined by Tiff Stevenson and we're talking about our stand-up show, Madman. How are you today? I'm good. You're sponsored by Bulmers. Bulmers, yeah. Wow. Okay. So am I getting paid for this? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> the only reason I ask is because my show's a little bit about advertising. So oh, that's really? why. Yeah. How do you feel about it? How do I feel about it? It's nuanced. That's how I feel about it. I've got a whole hour-long show about it. So, uh, but uh, specifically the way drinks market themselves, that's pretty much a chunk of the show where I talk about San Miguel and Jack Daniels and various others. So yeah, so it's interesting. Bulmers is like the pear cider, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so it kind of sells itself on being one of your five day, that kind of thing. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay. So what is, so the show's about advertising, you say, is it about anything? It's a little bit about advertising. Yeah. Um, it's called Madman. It's all about what, what makes a person, what makes a personality, how much of that is what we think uh, are our genuine ideas and how much of our personalities are being sort of consumed, mashed up and sold back to us. So, you know, products being anthropomorphised and cult of personality that we have on Twitter and stuff now where the bigger the arsehole you are, the more rewards you will get, you know, Katie Hopkins, people like that. So uh, it's all kind of about how, how do you stand out in a world where we, we only hear the voices that scream sort of loudest into the void. And I think advertising companies are trying to match that with their own campaigns. So we live in a very black and white world now, so it's sort of an exploration of that, if that makes sense. How do you feel that influences the comedy scene and you think that plays quite a part in it, the whole advertising and identity? <laughs> It does. I mean, we're, we're in a city full, if you go outside, of huge posters of people's faces. And um, I, it's day one of the fringe. I've already got poster blindness. I've been in town for about 15 minutes and I'm already like... <sighs> so uh, there is a school of belief that, uh, you know, once everyone starts doing it, it has the same impact as no one doing it. But uh, I do believe advertising seeps in in ways that we kind of aren't even conscious, really. Um, so if we see enough stuff on sort of Facebook, social media, and that's kind of a lot of the way that I sort of promoted the show this year really. I don't have huge posters, last year I had a very big poster, um, this year I, I'm just kind of Twitter and Facebook and, and I'm on at the stand, which is obviously the comedy club that's there year round, so it's comedy con connoisseurs that come along to shows there. I've done a show at the stand before, so it's just a little bit of a different route, which I think suits the show and, and what it's trying to say. What keeps you coming to the fringe? What do you like about it? Edinburgh is beautiful. There's that. It's a really beautiful city, um, and it will break your heart in a million ways. Um, your eyes will fall in love with Edinburgh, and your heart will be broken by it. But it is the best place to be amongst, uh, you know, your peers, the best in the world people doing what they do at the top of their game. There's also mad shit, you know, yes. Bouncy Castle, Dracula and Hamlet and stuff like that. Uh, stuff on the Royal Mile half the time, I'm not sure whether it's just someone hung over on their way home or if it's a piece of performance art. But that's part of the joy of it. The best, the good and the great, and the bad and the ugly, and you know, all of them, they all come to Edinburgh and, uh, and, and put it out there. So At the end of last year's show, I did Kate Bush's Wuthering Heights dance, and normally it was aimed at one specific man in the audience who had been talking to throughout the show. And I sort of do this bit where I flick my hair in their face, and I accidentally just headbutted a guy, sort of gave myself a mild concussion. He was fine because he had a really hard head. <laughs> I just, I had to stop and go. That's not meant to happen. I actually feel sick. So that was that's. There's an awkward moment. Yeah, there's definitely, um, there's definitely... So, why should we see your show? Um, because I've been doing stand-up for 10 years, 
so it should be good. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that's that's not a very good sell, is it? Come and see it because it's a really it's the best show I've written. I think. I think that every year they should get better, but I think this is the best show that I've written. Um, I think there's some there's some topical stuff and there's stuff about gun control. There's stuff about the Middle East where I was touring doing gigs recently. Um, there's some stuff about vagina houses. You have to come see the show if you if you want to know more about that. Um, so yeah, if you like your comedy at five past four in the afternoon, then you'll definitely enjoy my show. Thank you so much for talking with us today. This has been Waffle TV.